Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Tinkering with Tiny Humans. Thankfully, I have both tiny humans today, Jake and Lainey, and today we're gonna to show you what to do if you have a leaking delta faucet. Now, many of the features will be common to any two-handle faucet that you have, but this is a delta. The stems and the seals and the disassembly procedure will definitely match up if you have a delta faucet made fairly recently. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll walk you through how to do that. So this drip is not really bad. It's probably once every 10 seconds. So that's not wasting a huge amount of water. It's also probably not flowing fast enough to even make the water meter register the amount of water that's being used because there's friction on the vein inside of that water meter. And at this rate, it's probably not even turning. But it's annoying. There's always a puddle in the sink that gets moldy and yucky and nasty. So we're gonna fix it. And today, Lainey has brought who? Blue the axolotl. And uh, Blue the Axolotl will be watching us and making sure that we do everything correctly from up here. Yes, just put him right, right there. Okay, perfect. All right, so come on over here. The first thing that we need to do is turn off the water supply. Right now, the best place to do that is gonna be underneath the sink. So there's two shutoff valves, uh, one on the left, one on the right. The one on the right is usually cold. So Jake, can you turn off the cold water valve? It's the one on the right, turn it clockwise. All right. Squizzle. Okay, well, I put um, a little rag under there because sometimes from corrosion, the stem is not perfectly round. So when you turn it, sometimes a little bit of water will come out. But if you tighten it as much as you can, uh, let Lainey tighten the hot water, please. Good. Now turn on both of the handles to make sure the water is off. Nothing? Nothing. Good. So if, for instance, sometimes the uh, valves get bad over time, and if they have rubber seals, those rubber seals can dry out or they can crack and completely fall apart. Sometimes when you turn off that valve, it won't actually shut off the water. So you have two options. If it's just a little bit of a leak, just like a little stream of water, when you work on the faucet, you can just put a towel around it to catch that water that continues to flow out of this valve body once you remove it. Um, the other thing you can do is you can go to your main shutoff valve in the basement where the water enters your house or if you have a slab house, not in the basement, but wherever the valve enters the house, you turn that main valve off, decrease the pressure in the whole system, and then that'll, that'll kill any of the water in this fixture. So the next thing we're gonna do is close the stopper on the sink. Well, we're gonna be using tools to take stuff apart. So we're gonna close this to make sure we don't lose any pieces. The next thing we're gonna do is remove the handle now that we've stopped up the sink to prevent us from losing any pieces. There's a little um, retaining screw or set screw that holds the handle on. You're gonna have to figure out what size yours is. Some of them are metric, some of them are English. And this one I think is uh, 530, or uh, 330 seconds. So check that out and see if that fits, Jake. Do this cold one. We're just gonna do the cold one for the people and then we'll do the uh, hot one offline. Does it click in? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sounds tight. If it's too tight and you can't break it free, that's why there's two ends to these type of wrenches. Torque is force times the distance from the point of rotation. So if you turn on this little tiny end, it's hard to apply a lot of torque. If you stick this end into the screw, now the po uh, point that you're turning is farther away from the point of rotation, so it's easier to turn um, something that's stuck. So I'm gonna click this in here and see if you can break this free using this handle. So lift that up. Uh, just push right here. Ah, I heard it go click. Good. Uh, I think it might have broke. No, it's not broken. It just broke free. So now that it's loose, you can put the ball end and loosen that up. Now you don't want to completely take it off. Just a couple turns is probably all you need. So now that it's off, see if you can lift the handle straight up. Ooh, that was actually kind of easy. Hmm, perfect. All right, so we're going to put this somewhere safe. And it's always a good idea to have a towel standing by just in case there's any trapped water that you need to pick up. All right, next thing we need to do is there's this nut here that holds the valve assembly in place. And before we take anything apart, it's a really good idea, even if you're mechanically inclined, to put some witness marks on the parts so that we can remember how to put them back. It's a good time saver just to take some Sharpie markers and we're gonna make some different colored marks. We're gonna put a red mark on the part that will be covered up and a red mark on the nut, just so that we know that that is where that was. And then we're gonna put a black mark on this plastic body and then a corresponding black mark there. And then just in case the orientation of this guy matters, I think it's keyed. There's no way that you can do it incorrectly, but just in case it does, we're gonna put a green mark there and a green mark on the body. That way we can double check everything when we put it back together. 
What do you think would be a good tool to use to remove that brass nut? Any thoughts? This one. That's the, that is the optimal tool to use. So this is a Knipex player wrench. You may not have one of these. If you don't have one of those, there's some other tools that people might have in the toolkit. What do you think would be another option that we could use if you don't have one of those? Wrench. We'll pick from our set. Socket wrench? Not as, well, yeah, actually a socket wrench would work. Um, in this case, there's enough clearance that a socket or a ratchet wrench would fit over the top. This thing wrench? Yeah, this thing wrench. You know what this is called, Lanny? <laughs> no. This is an adjustable end wrench or a crescent wrench. So Crescent is the brand name that people use it by, but it's really an adjustable end wrench. So you could take this tool right here, make the jaws the correct size of the nut and Clench loosen it up. It. Yep. Or if you really had to, you could use a pair of these, which are arc joint pliers or channel locks. Um, these are not really good to use because these jaws are serrated and they'll damage the nut, but it's not the end of the world because the nut's gonna be concealed by the handle. So we're gonna use the best possible tool. Laney, you're gonna be the nut remover. So the first thing to do is these are adjustable by pressing this button. So you press the button and you can slide it open or slide it closed. And you want to pick the best fit. So this obviously does not work. This obviously does not fit. Well, the handle moves the jaws the rest of the way. So you just have to find the first increment that's close. I would say that's pretty good, but you set it up how you think it needs to be set up. Go for it. Okay. Maybe one click tighter. Yay, you did it. Okay. So it works best if the way that you're turning it, uh, this handle does the pushing. So I would put it on this way and you're going to spin it counterclockwise, which is this way. That means this handle is going to get pushed toward the window or toward the mirror. So with this in place, push this way with the bench. Push. Good. All right, let go. Now that this is spun a little bit, I think you can remove it the rest of the way with your fingers. Awesome. Thank you. I failed to mention this. The reason we're taking this apart is 99% of the time when you have a leak, it's because there's some gunk that has gotten into the valve body and the two ceramic plates aren't sealing nicely. And usually it happens on the hot side because there's mineral deposits more so on the hot side than the cold. But we're just gonna start. That was what I was gonna say. So one way that you can test is to turn off one of the shutoff valves, run the water and uh, stop it, and then come back in a little bit and see if it's still running, still dripping. Uh, if that is the case, then you know that it's the one that you did not turn off that's uh, causing the leak. In our case, I've already tested it. They're both leaking a little bit, so I'm gonna do both of them. All right, so now that we have that nut removed, this valve assembly can pull out. Oh, oh, it's leaking. Oh, now check it out. Come over here with the camera, please. This is the kind of stuff that's likely causing us some issues. Uh, this is some gunk. It's pretty gritty, and this is either the uh, shutoff valve underneath the sink that's decomposed into pieces, or it's gunk from the water service. So we want to make sure we get all this stuff out and clean these surfaces. All right, so that, that looks really good. It's really good, right? Yeah. Yeah, right? Okay, and then the other thing we need to do is we need to reapply some special food grade silicone grease. Do not use petroleum based grease. Use only silicone based grease and it will not hurt the O-rings. So we're gonna take a needle in those pliers, reach in there, remove this little cup seal. What is Give that? that a brush, please. Brush. Now there's also a spring in here, so be careful that we don't lose this spring. ASMR, brush it. Okay, thanks. All right, now for the most exciting part for the kids. We are going to do a super geyser water blaster technique. Yeah! Yes. So can I have these two pieces? Thank you. We are going to put a cup upside down over here. Like this? Uh, Mom, like it? Yeah, like that. So I will be the cup holder. Inside? Yes. What we're going to do is I'm going to have them open the cold water valve while this cup is over the top. And this is a 32 ounce cup, which in America is called a small beverage. And we're gonna hold it like this and it's gonna get all the gunk flushed out of there. All right, Lainey, turn it on. More power, more power, and off. Off, off, off. And all the way off. All right, we're gonna take a second to dry Lenny off. And then just put your finger in here and then just 
plus. Sim, tu dá. <laughs> Thanks for helping, Moxie. No, I'm not helping. I, I, I'm avoiding. Camera person, take a look over here. <laughs> so this is all the crud that was in there that we, we got out, which is pretty exciting. So I'm going to do that one more time. It was kind of slow to retype it. Oh no, blue got wet. No, he's fine. All right, guys, let's put it back together and then we'll give it a test. So the first thing we're gonna put back is spring. 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 Can you drop that gently into the hole? Okay, good. And then we are going to put a little bit of silicone grease, silicone grease on the seal. All right, Jake, can you place this into that little receptacle where the spring is? You can use these, you just have to be gentle so you don't tear the rubber. So we put the seal back in there, uh, the spring is underneath it. We got a little bit of grease on it. We're gonna put a tiny bit of grease also on this plate. And then we're going to put a tiny bit of grease on this shaft. What's the grease for? Um, it helps slip over the o-ring so that the o-ring doesn't get abraded over time and it helps with the waterproof seal so there's a o-ring in there and there's an o-ring right there so we're going to slide this over here and then we'll also put a little bit here on the ceiling face and then this piece goes here so we've got our blue on our blue we've got our black on our black we're going to drop that in there Give it a little push. Good. All right, so what part goes back next? Do we remember? The top. Like what? The nut. All right, uh, yeah, Jake, yeah, Lainey yeah. took this off. You put it on. Can you throw that on top, please? I threw it. Don't do that. You can damage the threads, okay? So always, before you tighten something, press down on it and turn it counterclockwise until you hear it go click. That means that the threads are now lined up and you won't cross thread it. Do you hear it? Listen. Click. That click. That means now you can turn it clockwise. And always make sure that the thing that we're threading on is parallel to the other thing so that it's not cross-threaded as well. Okay, so that's, that's finger tight. It's already adult finger tight, so all we need to do is just give a little nudge. So 16th of a turn should be all we need. Then we're gonna put our handle back on. Handle. Wait, wasn't it? Yeah, it's the car. All right, Lainey, you're going to be the installer, so you're going to take the hex key, mm -hmm. insert the hex key, and uh, turn clockwise. Turn me. Oh, it's stripping. It's not stripping. It's dripping. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so it turns smoothly without rubbing, and I can't pull it off, so that's good. We are going to do the other side off camera and then we'll check back with you to see how the repair went. After doing the hot side, I figured uh, it would be a good time to take apart the aerator, which is the part that goes uh, right about here. Sometimes they're surface mounted and you can just remove them with your fingers. Sometimes they require a key like this. But as you can see, there's a tremendous amount of grit and yuck that was caught by the aerator. So I'm gonna clean that off before we put it back together. And uh, you should probably do the same thing too if you're trying to fix a leak issue. All right guys, we are back and we've all finished up. I also took off the aerator, uh, which is the piece that's at the end of the faucet to make sure that I got all the gunk out of there as well. And it is clean, it is not dripping, and it is awesome. So thank you, Tiny Helpers. What did you learn today, Lainey? Gunk can make it drip. I thought it'd just make it fall. Mm, that's a good observation. Drip. That's a good observation. Jake, what'd you learn? I learned that that like sometimes it can kind of make like matter between like imperial and like US or like metric. 
like systems because like sometimes they might not have the size that you're looking for. That's right. It's a pain being in the United States because you have to buy two of every tool. You get to buy a metric set and an English set and it's a bummer. So um, what was your favorite part about the project? Cup, cup blasting. blasting. Cup blasting, yes, where we put the 32 ounce cup over the uh, open spigot, turned on the water and blast all the gunk out of it. That was a lot of fun. So thank you so much for watching. We fixed our faucet. I hope that this helps you fix yours. If you encounter any problems while you're doing yours, just shoot a message in the comments below and I'll get back with you. Um, we are really excited to have you with us. So please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And if you have any other projects you'd like us to try, please place that in the comments as well. Thank you so much. You have a great day. Bye. Bye.